In this video, we're going to focus on how we can connect two of these items here. As you can see here right now, we have two charts, and these charts are directly connected with the tooltip. So this is a very nice uh, exercise as well, because you can see here this will connect them both together. They're both connected, although there's only one requirement, the data sets and the data points must be equal in amount. So as you can see here, while the values can be different, it could be all different types of charts, everything else, but the data point and the data set must be identical. So let's start to look how to trigger the tooltip from two charts at once on Hoover in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is we need to get the default code. To find the default code, you can go to chartjs3.com, getting started, this specific link here, which you can also find in the description box. Scroll down and then just copy this chunk of code here. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. And then I'll just paste that all in there. I'll just cut out that title there and put it in here. Save this and refresh, and there we are. So now we have one bar chart. What I want to do is I want to add up another item here. So let's say a line chart. But I'll just duplicate the data here completely. So duplicate this. And then paste it all in there and then we say this will be our line chart and the only difference here we will have different data points say 99 33 66 99 33 33 and 99 all right so now we have this one here what i need to do here i need to give this a different number or else we have a conflict because the constant is not allowed to have two times the same constant so we have here data two and here we have conflict number two, and this will be conflict number two, chart, my chart number two, and this one here. And finally here, this one, very important here, because here we're using a shorthand. And because of that, we, we will get an error, so I need to say here data number two. So this one must be specified differently. Why? Because if the object name and the constant are identical, we can use a shorthand. But now in this case, it is not identical, so we need to, use a so we need to specify it completely like this. You might say, what about this one here? In charge, yes, for some reason, convict two must be, it must be like that. So this, so there's no other discussion about that. All right, so once we have this, scroll up here, make sure you have in here another ID for the canvas, say here number two. So if I save that, refresh, there we are, but we get an error, interesting. So let's see what's the error. Let's open up developer tab, maybe I'm forgetting something. Unexpected identifier number 133. Number 133 we have here, of course, no comma here. Save that, refresh. There you are, this works. So what I want to do now is, because what I want to do is, when you hover over these elements here, I want to give them a hover color. And the reason I'm doing that is because later on you will see clearly how that, if it works, yes or no. So I'm going to say your border color, and this will be the hover background color but I select the border color item why because I want the solid color here so if I save this refresh for Hoover now I said here there you are you can see here although it's quite tough to see that one so I'm going to do some modification later on I just copy this first put it in the upper item save refresh as you can see here, this works so this one here I'll just maximize the space here or make the point radius so we're going to say uh hoover point radius let's make this very extreme so it's easy to spot 10 pixels uh let's see here what is that as well i guess that's also the oh, of course it is not hoover point it's point hoover radius safe refresh if i hoover over it there we are so you get this solid color so this is important because later on you can just see this nicely so now we have this. What I want to do next is now to start to figure out that when we hover over this item, we should see also the tooltip here. So that will mean that in the canvas, what we need to do is the trigger the hover effect. So the first thing what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here my chart. Why my chart? I'm going to grab not my chart number two, but my chart, which is chart number one. But not only that, I want to get the canvas object in there. You might say, are we not able to just grab this or just my chart? No, and the reason why is because both of them, they have not only this variable, which is the element, but also the config, which triggers the drawing and all the data. So I don't want to trigger everything. I only need to specify specifically 
the get element by ID, and that's the canvas object here. Then we're going to say on mouse move, we want to let's say hover number one as a function. So then once we did this, what I'm going to do here now is make sure that you have it here up. Let's say a function. And this function is called hover one. And of course here I'm going to say this will be the value of move. Basically the move coordinate or the if the event is being triggered here. So I just do a console log. And I just say yes. Or okay, save, refresh. Open up the developer tab. If I refresh again, so it will be nicely matched. But you can see here, as I hover over it here, it doesn't matter where I hover over it, but I hover over this specific canvas, it triggers. If I hover here, you see slowly something happening because probably it's loading just all these effects, but once it's done, nothing happens anymore. So this is the first validation that this is working. So the next thing what I want to do now is not only hover effect on the canvas, but basically when we hover over a specific element, we should get that element ID or index. So that's what we're going to do next. So what we're going to say here, we're going to say a constant points equal, and then here we're going to use a specific chart chart.js function. So I'm going to say a my chart to get the chart uh, item. So basically this one here, just my chart, that's the constant. Then we're going to use here a command called get elements at event for mode and pay attention here for the capitalized letter for every word here. This is just a what we call a uh, cattle case JavaScript command. So what we're really doing here is we're going to get the element at the event for mode. So what is the event? Well, it's the move or basically the triggering. And then the elements are what we call these bars here or the circle shapes here. So what I want to do here now is I'm going to say here it will be triggered on move, basically this trigger event here. And then what I want to say here, how it will trigger, it will trigger or analyze if we get the nearest item. So basically, if I hover on this one, the nearest one would be the blue bar here, which is index number one. This is index zero, etc., etc. because in JavaScript, uh, arrays are calculated starting from index zero or zero-based calculation, counting. So next, what I want to do here, once you have nearest, what I want to have as well, the trigger must be on intersect and intersect let's set this on true means the following just think about a, a crossing we have two roads crossing each other that cross point is what we call our intersection so it, in charge yes the intersection is the moment our mouse crosses this imaginary line here and triggers the tooltip and the hoover effect so that is our intersect so we say here true comma true again to confirm all of this and then we have it so if I do now a console log and points, you will see nicely how this works. So refresh here and let's remove the OK. I saw there is still an OK, am I correct? Or not anymore? No. All right, I already removed that. Refresh, hover here, look at this. You can see here, nothing happens. You don't get an array, but if I hover over this item here or that item, or just jump a bit, you can see here, and then the moment I get this one, you will see it recognizes, and not only does it recognize, it gives us the important text which we want is the data set index which is zero which is correct because we only have one data set currently active and secondly we have an index here an index was sunday which is number six that is correct as well so the moment we move on this black one we should trigger this item here as well so this will only work so this is very important this will only work if your data and your data sets are consistent with the with the two charts or else it won't work so now what I want to do here is instead of this console log, I want to do now an if statement. I'm going to do an if statement here. And this if statement will just trigger now not the points, but only if we have an element in there or an array in there. Meaning now save that refresh. If I hover over the white space, nothing happens, as you can see. But if I hover in here, every time I hover a specific bar, it triggers it and it knows it now. Alright. So with this, we can now grab, for example, Go in here, we can grab here our data set index. So I'm going to create you know a constant and we're going to say constant, let's say data set equals points, and then we're going to say zero dot data set index. And then what I want to do here, copy that do again, and then we're going to say here data point for the index itself. Copy that, put that in there, save that, refresh. So now of course, nothing happens here, I realize, 
because we don't put that down here. Put it down here. Copy this, save that. Oh, save, refresh. Hoover, now I get one of zero. Why zero? Because that's the data set. Let's set the data point. Save that. Hoover. And refresh, of course. There we are. So now it triggers every time the number's here. So this works. So now we're done here, and this or these we have now the most important part. We can now figure out are we hovering on the right item. So then what I want to do here is the following. I want to now start to use a command that will trigger the command in here. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say first of all my chart number two because I want to now communicate the moment we hover over here or we hover on this, this works, but I want to say then communicate to this chart, chart number two, and trigger whatever we want to trigger. And in this case, what I want to trigger here is my chart tooltip dot. And let's say here, this is a command from chart. Yes, again, set active elements. And then what I want to do here is let's do this. And then do a bracket, enter. Then within here, I'm going to say here curly braces. And I'm going to say here, the data set index, remember, I'm going to grab this data set here, exactly the same as we did here, comma, and then we have here the data point, which just will be the index equals data point. So if I save this, refresh, Hoover, 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 all right. So it will trigger, but of course it is static. Why? Because we don't have a command that will say undo it. And secondly, the moment we hover uh, on anything else, it won't work anymore because there's only one. If you understand the logic of chart.js, there's only one tooltip built in here. This is why if you hover here, you can see this tooltip quickly jump from one side to another because there's only one tooltip. So it is not possible to have two tooltips at one item. Of course, there's a, I have a video for that, how to make a customized item for that, but that's a different story. So that would mean the following. If we have this here, we, what we want to do now is we want to first of all make this active and also not only this, I also want to have the so-called color active here. So I'm going to remove this, we duplicate this all, we generally only set this an active, no tooltip. So we have the so-called color, as you can see here now, look at purple, we go here, and of course we need to refresh still, but there you are. You can see this works, but not fully. So what we want to do now is we have this here. So what I want to do here is next, I'm going to just say here, my chart, and it's not moving, really my chart number two, dot update. So the moment we move, we want to, of course, update it, so it will start to work better. All right, so this works nice, and you can see here, beautiful. So this starts to work very nice, but of course, how do we undo whatever we have done? So what we need to do here, that's why you have the if statement, we're going to say else, and this else is the following. So if this is not the case, what I want to do then is I want to say, so if we are on points, that's why we have these points here, this is always active, but if that is suddenly not anymore active, meaning that we're not hovering on, or we're hovering on the white space, not anymore on the element, in that case, I want to undo this, so I'm going to grab this. Now what I'm going to say here, Enter, enter. Just paste that all in there. All right. And then what I'm going to say is the following. I'm going to say here, set this, but now I'm going to remove, let's remove all of this. We have no data points anymore in here. Pay attention here. So we have only this bracket here, comma. And then we're going to say here, we're going to reset our coordinates. So we set on X is zero, which is basically our coordinate and the y equals zero. So basically we're moving in our corners here, basically nowhere, or not on whatever we are hovering uh, compared to what we were before. So then we just say here, we do this twice, and I'm going to remove all this here. Or we do this twice, but one is for the tooltip, and the other one is to uh, remove the color. Save that, refresh. Hoover, go here, go there, go there. Oh, absolutely phenomenal. So this is very, very beautiful. So now, how do we trigger this one here? Exactly the same, but then in the opposite direction. So make sure we have this all correct. All right, that's from here. What I'm gonna do is push this up, copy this, 
here. Let's say over function number two, and probably you can refactor it to, to make it all to, together. But in this case, I want to spend time on that. But I'm going to say here, chart number two. And this is all same, that's fine. But here, this will be my chart, my chart, my chart, my chart, my chart. Copy this, put it in here, duplicate it, but then chart number two, and hover this function number two as we see in here. Save this, double check, there we are. Now they are nicely connected with each other, absolutely phenomenal. And this is basically how you can do this here and uh, how you can connect them nicely. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know a little bit more about the set, uh, the set element or a set active element, I have a specific video here that is working with buttons. So maybe you want it in a different format. In that case, I highly recommend you this one here, how to highlight data points with the set active elements in Chart.js.